Is the secret to finding Bigfoot nothing? Bigfoot research and honestly a lot of wildlife research is missing something. But it's not better cameras or equipment, it's data. But not the kind of data you might think. The data we're missing is null data, or the data of literally nothing. It's those research trips and investigations where literally nothing was observed. So today we're gonna learn why those zeros are so important and why that null data is probably one of the most powerful things that we can possibly have in Bigfoot data science. Also, if you're new to the channel, hi, my name's Terrestrial. I'm a naturalist, ex-NASA researcher, and also the creator of the Sasquatch Data Project. I really love math, science, statistics, AI, and Bigfoot. So if those are your jam too, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So when I say null data, I'm talking about when someone went out looking for something like a Sasquatch or another species of animal and they turned up with nothing, nothing happened, no observations were made. This could be things like a birder going out and looking for a heron so they're chilling at a pond all day and saw literally nothing. Maybe you have a camera trap set up for weeks and weeks and you don't record anything. Or you could be out in the field hiking, camping, whatever and nothing happens. All of this is very important. The problem is, this data is rarely ever reported because, you know, it kind of makes sense. You're like, well, nothing happened. Why would that be useful? But from a biological, ecological, and statistical perspective, these blanks and absences are absolute gold. So let's explore this a little bit outside of the Bigfoot world. So let's imagine that you're a field biologist and you're trying to learn about this really rare species of frog and basically map its distribution and range. If you only map where the frogs are found, your map is essentially going to be just a bunch of dots and that tells you something, but it's not the complete story. Without the null data or without that data where the frog wasn't, you can't tell whether the frog was genuinely absent or just no one bothered to look, compare effort versus results, or estimate the true probability of finding the species. In ecology, this is why survey teams don't just record their successes. Every site that they visit gets recorded and logged whether they detected the species or not. And this is what creates a full data set, not just a highlight reel. Statistically, this is the difference between presence-only data and presence-absence data. Presence-only data is the majority of Sasquatch reports. Essentially, this is data where someone experienced something, they took the time to report it, and then those investigators took the time to put it in their own data set. The majority of Bigfoot data is when someone experienced something, and we really don't have that null data. Now, this doesn't mean it's totally useless or anything. There's plenty you can do with presence-only data, like Maxent modeling. But with this type of data, you can't predict where Sasquatch won't be or just isn't. On the other hand, presence-absence data includes both sightings and non-sightings, or observations and not observations. With this type of data, you can actually do things like logistic regression or occupancy modeling, and this is where you're going to be able to tell where the species is or isn't more accurately. So another way to think about this is like with social media or something with selfies. People are more likely to take selfies at particular landmarks. So if you mapped all of these places where people are posting and taking pictures, you would see particular hotspots showing up. What you wouldn't see is all the people in the other locations that aren't taking selfies. So the people taking selfies and posting them is like presence only data, but if you wanted to include the people not taking selfies and posting them, this would be your presence absence sample set. And this tells you a lot more about whatever your question is with people posting selfies or not. <laughs> so here's another thing with presence only data that makes things kind of complicated when you're interpreting results. Even if something is present, you might not actually detect it. And this is what ecologists call imperfect detection. Let's go back to our camera trap idea. Let's say the bobcat or whatever you're trying to get a picture of walks behind the trail camera or walks to the side. The bobcat's in the location, you're just not getting a picture of it. Therefore, the species is indeed present, you're just not detecting it. So in Sasquatch research, the same thing potentially applies. If you have a camera trap set up, but the Sasquatch walks behind it, it doesn't mean the Sasquatch isn't there in the location, you just didn't detect it or see it. Or you might be out hiking, there could be a Sasquatch 50 feet away peeking at you from behind a tree, but you might not see it. And this is why null data is not the same as proof of absence. But if you have enough null data, then you can start estimating the probability of detection. And if you're a big nerd and want to know the equation for this, it's actually pretty simple. The probability of detection equals psi times p, where psi is the probability that the species is indeed present at the site, and P is the probability of detecting it if it's actually there. And so here's the problem. 
If you only have presence-only data, you cannot differentiate between psi and p. You don't actually know if the species truly isn't there or if people just aren't seeing it. And this is where null data lets us estimate both. Another reason that null data is just so important is that it gives us the denominator. Right now, Sasquatch data is literally all numerator, which are the reports themselves or, you know, where the species was detected. But without the denominator or how many times someone went out investigating and did not come up with anything, we can't calculate a meaningful rate. For example, if there's two reports from Yosemite where thousands and thousands of people visit every year, that rate is very different than two reports from really rugged backcountry where people rarely ever go. Having null data would let us control for effort, how many nights were spent in the woods, how many investigations were run, etc. And this is a very standard thing to do in ecology. When birders submit to eBird, for example, they always report the effort, how long they searched, how many people were in their group, and what methods they used. And that's what makes the data extra useful for science. Of course, though, null data isn't perfect. A recorded absence doesn't necessarily mean the species wasn't there, as we've previously discussed. So ecologists handle this with repeated surveys. Let's say you check the same site five, six, seven times, you never detect anything, the probability that there's a true absence in that area of the species starts to rise. So for Sasquatch research, if you're visiting the same site over and over again, make sure you're documenting every single time nothing happens. This can help us build data sets where multiple non-detections can help raise our confidence that there's truly an absence of the species. It is not glamorous, but statistically powerful. So hopefully by this point, you understand that null data is really important for field work. But the question remains, what can you actually do with this data? And how can it help us out in our search for Sasquatch? Well, it can help us start distinguishing from actual hotspots of activity from human hotspots. Are these reports clustering because Sasquatch activity actually is higher in these areas, or is it due to more human activity? Looking at the null data will really help us start determining the differences between the two. We can also start to estimate encounter probabilities. With the null data, we can start to say things like, well, Given that we've been to this location a hundred times and we've only had one thing happen here, the probability that we're going to have some kind of encounter is about 1%. And this is really rad because that becomes a testable hypothesis. Science. It will also allow us to start integrating with mainstream methods. Occupancy models, detection probabilities, effort covariates, all standard ecological tools that become available to us once we start logging the null data. And finally, we can start looking at long-term trends. Combining the presences and the absences over decades can start to show us if reports are increasing, decreasing, or staying stable relative to human activity. And all of these things would be so incredible to have for our investigations into Bigfoot. So here's the big overall idea. Presence-only data can show us the hints of patterns in the data. The null data can turn those hints into something testable, and that is powerful. It gives us denominators, it gives us detection probabilities, and it puts Sasquatch research in the same playing field as mainstream biology. And that's so cool. So if you're a field researcher, I highly encourage you to start documenting every single time something doesn't happen. I promise it'll be useful down the road. Anyway, I hope you learned something cool and that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you wanna keep up with all things Sasquatch Data Project, make sure you follow me on pretty much any social media. My handle on everything is at Sasquatch Data. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, obviously YouTube. So yeah, make sure you follow me on all those places. Thank you so much again for watching. Stay rad.